Hey everybody, just give a couple minutes here for some people to get in. And we are officially live, quarantine stop. Alright. And let's see if we can get any viewers real quick before I do a quick login. Perfect, there we go. And we'll share our live broadcast. Hey everybody, whoever's in, feel free to comment in. We're just sharing this on the uh, personal page real quick and we'll jump right into the show. One second here. And share. The page. Perfect. Alrighty. There we go. Hey everybody, I don't know who's watching with us, but I want to welcome you to this week's edition of the Get Your Geek On Podcast, uh, episode 128. As always, I am your host, Chuck Keywatch. Robert Dokes can't be with us right now. He is taking care of his mom in New Jersey. Uh, everybody here is locked down quarantine style, so that's why we are not with you from our usual studio. Um, so first of all, we want to make sure all you guys are doing great. Sorry that we haven't been on. Uh, we're trying to figure out whether it was best to do something from the studio or whether to try to work out home shows. So I think for the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some home shows. Um, really, really excited for that. Hey, Mark. Hey, Charlie. Everybody want to welcome you guys in. Um, so quick couple things we want to talk about here. Obviously, coronavirus is devastating the entertainment industry right now. Uh, we have entire Phase 4 of Marvel was moved. Uh, we're losing all kinds of TV shows that may not come back on the air now, stuff that's going to be canceled. AMC theaters may never reopen, which is really crazy right now. Uh, so we're just going to jump into some basic news of the week. Uh, first of all, I do want to mourn. We are mourning the loss of one of our favorite shows here uh, in front of the show, Harvey Guillen and Rick Worthy. Uh, their show, The Magicians, ended this week on Sci-Fi. Uh, I was very sad to see The Magicians go. I was a fan for six seasons. It was absolutely incredible writing. The books are incredible. Some of the best mental health and sexual orientation representation stories ever put on television. Um, still never got them over them killing Quentin, but what can I say? That was a really cathartic finale. Um, it was written knowing it was going to be the series finale, which is always much better. I hate shows that have ended on cliffhangers. Uh, Heroes and Alphas will stick with me forever because of that. Um, one of the things I did want to talk about, though, is a couple of our insiders are still working, even though these things are all shut down. Uh, so we got some reports coming out of Stargirl that you will absolutely see the Jay Garrick Flash featured in person this season. Uh, however, we will not get the Alan Scott Green Lantern beyond anything other than the photo that you see in the premiere. Very excited for that, though. Um, that show's actually shaping up to be very, very well done. Uh, the other thing is Black Adam. Uh, we have gotten the full look at the script for that. It's absolutely incredible. Two full Justice Society of America has come together to stop him. You have the old school Green Lantern, old school Flash heavy part of it. Um, and then the new Justice League that has to stop him is Adam Smasher, Hawkgirl, you know, the rundown that you saw there. Black Adam, I think, is shaping up to be one of the best DC movies ever. The, the script for that is absolutely incredible. The way that they're setting it up to bring in Superman and Shazam for Shazam 2, which they are absolutely setting up Superman. You guys didn't believe me when I said Ezra Miller was going to be in Crisis. Believe me when I said that Superman will be in Shazam 2. Whether it's Cavill or not, I don't know, but it will be Superman. So I'm very, very, very excited about that. Um, quick rundown for those of you that are stuck at home. Some streaming services have made some stuff free that's normally paid. So I want to make sure that you guys are checking out HBO. HBO made thousands of movies and TV shows free to stream on their app or right on your cable service. You don't even need a login. Um, shows like McMillions, the McDonald's documentary, Silicon Valley, every single episode, The Inventor, amazing documentaries and shows, totally free, The Wire, The Sopranos, you name it. Don't even need a login, like I said. Uh, the owner, if you have Disney+, Plus, they added Onward early, um, as well as a couple other shorts that are very, very great. But Onward is one of those movies that, sadly, because of this virus, it's it's not going to get the sequel and like the, the box office money that it deserved. But it's an incredible story. As somebody that lost a father, if you've lost a parent at all, like, trigger warning, but it's an absolutely incredible movie. I don't know why the reviews for it weren't that strong. I really loved it. Um, and that's saying something, because the past couple Pixar movies have been a little bit off for me. Uh, let's see here. ESPN, as we predicted, moved up the release of The Last Dance, the Jordan documentary, the best 30 for 30 that we're ever going to see. Ten part, going to be hitting April 19th, so we're really excited for that. Um, like I said, Phase 4 completely shuffled their release dates. Pretty much everything got moved by about four and a half months. Um, none of the big, like, year delays that we saw with Fast and the Furious and 007, stuff like that. The one that's blowing my mind, though, is New Mutants. So we got word that they're going to release Artemis Fowl straight to the Disney Plus streaming service, but New Mutants still has no release date. This movie's been finished for a year and a half now. Just give it to us. Put it out there somewhere. We're all stuck at home. Give us a reason to watch it. You're going to get more eyes on it now than you ever would have putting it out in theaters. Let's be honest there. So release New Mutants and release the Snyder Cut. God damn it. Zack Snyder did a Batman vs. Superman screening this week and gave great commentary and into, insight into what his Snyder Cut is, and the fact that it is still, it's going to be seeing the light of day at some point, and I can't wait, because the Green Lantern fan in me is just dying to see this movie made. Um, let's see, Venom, that's like the, the intriguing one here. Venom has not moved its release date at all. It's said to come out October 20th. 
Um, we got some great insight for that. I got the trailer description. Absolutely incredible what they're doing with Carnage. I'm really excited to see Woody Harrelson. But that's a very strategic move because that is like the big anchor for Sony this year. And with what Venom 1 did in October for them, they're not going to want to move that date. So I'm really interested to see what happens with that one because literally every other Sony movie, every other Marvel movie has been shuffled with the exception of Venom. So that's a really, really interesting one to watch out. Um, another cool thing that's coming out of this uh, coronavirus shutdown is some great celebrity interviews that we're going to be having. Um, as you know, we're big stand-up comedy fans here, so no stand-ups can actually work right now. So I've been in contact with a lot of our previous guests and new ones. We're going to be having Burt Kreischer, Tom Segura, Ali Sadiq, Joey Diaz, Josh Porter, I'm trying to think, Brian Redband, Dan Soder, Jay Okerson. Like, we're literally going to be doing daily interviews with comedians. And one of the ones I'm really excited about is Tiger King. So let's get into the meat of it. Tiger King has been taking over the world. I can announce right now that um, later this week I will be having Doc Antle and Kelsey Sapp on the show. So those of you who don't know, Doc is like the third of the, the three ringleaders of Tiger King. And then Kelsey Sapp is the um, young man that actually had his arm bitten off by the tiger in the show. Um, I just want to make sure I am calling the young man. So uh, he's actually trans and it was a big deal in the show. They didn't address his pronouns or anything like that. So I want to make sure you guys know uh, Sapp is actually a guy. So we're going to be having him on. I'm working on getting uh, Joe's campaign manager and a couple other people from that show because it is the most batshit crazy thing I have ever seen. I think I've seen the, the seven episodes five times each now because I, was, I couldn't believe these were real people. I wish Robert was here to give his side of the review right now. But anybody that eulogizes their husband in front of that person's dead mother by talking about how they would whip their balls out any time you were sad... I couldn't believe he was a real person. What's even funnier is most of you may have seen the John Oliver piece on him a couple of years back, which I absolutely did. So I had known about him from that. So the moment the credits kicked up, I was like, oh my God, this is the John Oliver guy. And then to see that factor into the show later on is pretty cool. Um, one thing I think is awesome is that it's become such a hit that they're actually filming a bonus episode right now that's going to be released next week. And then the people from the show are now making money on Cameo. Like Jeff Lowe for 150 bucks on Cameo will send you a message or whatever you want. And um, if anybody else thinks James Garrison looks like a Chucky doll that got his hair hit with a flat iron, let me know. Because I want to know how he talked them into the jet ski shot. For no reason in episode 7 of the show, this the greatest cutaway ever where he's like, just let's go. And just cuss to James Garrison on a jet ski, just zoom in with like Danger Zone playing in the background or something like this. Absolutely ridiculous. But um, once I got blocked by Big Cat Rescue. So that was like a highlight of my week. I was commenting on a Big Cat Rescue's live video that Carol absolutely killed her husband, which that's mine. Forget making a murderer. Forget all that type of stuff. This chick killed her husband and then so nonchalantly hints at it multiple times in videos and stuff that it's just like, if you've ever watched an Investigation Discovery channel or an episode of SVU, it's very clear that this chick did it. There's one line where she says, um, if you wanted to kill someone, you would put sardine oil on their shit. And it's just the way she says it, I instantly think of the Kevin Hart clip. Like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're not just going to blow past what you just said like you didn't just say that. And then when she does the video on wealth back in the day, she's like, those who do certain things accidentally, wide-eyed and crazy. So this show is a study on human. I truly hope that when the earth burns to the ground and the aliens find a record of us, it's only Tiger King. So that's what they think humanity was. Because Jesus Christ, it makes me ashamed to be white. Like, this just strictly white people shit right there, like owning tigers and all that type of stuff. And I just, when Doc Antle says there's nothing more sexy or relevant to today's culture than a tiger, I laugh. Because it's literally, I could think of a thousand things that were more relevant to today's culture than a tiger. But I'd love to know what you guys thought about this. Are you watching Tiger King? Like, where are you in the madness of it all? What are your thoughts on all the memes that have sprung? I think quarantine made this much bigger than it would have been normally. Obviously, this would have been a hit no matter what. But I think quarantine is making this, like, the new American Idol of our time right now. I mean, the fact that Joe Exotic is in jail and in quarantine himself with coronavirus and he can't enjoy any of this celebrity is hilarious to me. And I think, honestly, Carol got the worst of it because she may not be in jail for murder, but she is going to be trolled for the rest of her life, whether it's online or in person. The stuff I've already seen is incredible. Uh, the rapper Mercules has an incredible song called uh, Carol Killed Her Husband. I gotta put that, I gotta cue that up real quick. Hold on here. Mercury, shout out. But the memes that I'm seeing, the, the, the TV show coverage is just absolutely incredible. I've never seen, like, even when Making a Murder came out, it didn't really kind of take over the world like this. But I truly believe it's just because we all have nothing else to be doing right now. So I'm just going to play the first couple seconds of this. But this is uh, Mercury, the rapper. He took Joe's Here Kitty Kitty beat and did this to it. Absolutely incredible. And that's the type of stuff that's coming out of this right now. So I'm really excited to see where it goes with that show. And I am just absolutely fascinated by it. I mean, the fact that, like, 
he seduced two straight every time you think that like you've reached the craziest point of this show and you're like checkmate it can't get crazy you're like oh yeah checkmate nope wham there you go it's like oh he's a gay meth owning hillbilly oh he seduces straight guys oh you think that's crazy here's a chick that murdered her husband here's a cult leader with a hundred wives like it just keeps going here's snitches and fbi agents and everything else that you could imagine it's it has literally everything you could ever imagine, like running down the documentary checklist. So I highly recommend it. Um, but I will end on this with you guys stuck in quarantine. I did want to give you a couple recommendations of some stuff to watch. Um, so for those of you on Netflix, Community was just added, the entire series. So make sure you guys check that out. Community is very much in the vein of Parks and Rec and The Office. So anybody that's fans of that, obviously check out Community. Absolutely incredible. Like I said, the HBO uh, app has put out some incredible stuff on there. I would recommend the McMillions documentary. In my opinion, the best documentary ever made. Silicon Valley is a great series. If you guys are looking for something to binge, you got six seasons. That's absolutely hilarious. Um, and then on Netflix, I would also recommend How to Fix a Drug Scandal. That's their newest documentary. It's a seven-parter as well. And actually, it all takes place about 20 miles from where we do this show every week here in Massachusetts. And that is absolutely insane. That is about the women that are responsible for testing drugs when you get arrested with them and stuff. Being addicted to the drugs themselves and then having to vacate 40,000 convictions in Massachusetts because of it. Like these girls were literally smoking crack at the desk where they were supposed to be testing the crack. It's insane. Um, but yeah, Tiger King definitely lets you guys know what to think. And then Doc Antle's interview as of right now, it looks like we're going to be having him on Saturday and Saf on Sunday. So Doc Antle this Saturday at 12 o'clock, I'm still confirming with his son. Kelsey Saf on Sunday night. We're going to be doing that probably around 6 o'clock. And then the comedian interviews, we're going to be going live starting tomorrow. Um, we're going to have Josh Sneed, Cy Edmondson, um, and Burt Kreischer are going to be the three this week. And like I said, we will be hitting up comedian interviews as much as possible. Um, hopefully we're going to have Dan Cummins back on. I'm running through my entire list of comics that I've worked with in the past 20 years for this one because there is no better chance for us to get guests than we have right now. So I want to get you guys some great interviews out there. Um, also, Comic-Cons kind of got shut down. Obviously, we couldn't cover Ace. We couldn't do that type of stuff. Who knows if San Diego is going to run at this point. Um, but a couple online Comic-Cons are springing up um, that are going to be running at the end of April. And we're going to be doing some cool stuff with them. So we're going to be doing some interviews, some moderating, some panels there. So definitely check that out. Obviously, if there's anything we can do to help you guys stay entertained through all this, let us know. Um, I will be back with Robert for some home shows next week. Like I said, he's in Jersey taking care of some family business, but says hello to everybody. And other than that, that's going to wrap things up. If you have anything cool that you want us to review or anything that you recommend to us, obviously shoot us some messages. Uh, we'll be active here in the group as well. And then for anybody watching right now that wants a free digital code, if you want the Knives Out code, Tell us your favorite part of Tiger King, and I will shoot you over the digital code for Knives Out. Um, so that's going to wrap things up for episode 128. Obviously, it's been hectic for everybody here. I hope you guys are all doing well. Sucks being out of work myself with no, no NBA, no NHL, and no idea when they're going to be back again. This will be my foreseeable future. So I'm focusing on the podcast, working through as many interviews as we can. So if nothing else comes to this, guys, we're going to get some great, great interviews. So if you're stand-up comedian fans, Tiger King fans, fans of the magicians, fans of what we do in the shadows, stay tuned. Harvey Guillaume's coming back on next week to promote season two. Really excited about what we do in the shadows. Um, so check out the trailer for that as well. That's going to wrap things up for episode 128, quarantine edition of the Get Your Geek On podcast. I've been Chuck Keywatts. You guys have yourselves a week.